This is Kevin Pruitt interviewing Alex Petrarca on Rising Tide Startups. Alex, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, Alex, give us a little background. Who is Alex Petrarca? Um, I am just turned 26 last month. Um, I know I might look like I'm 15, but I'm not. I'm a full grown <laughs> adult. Um, <laughs> I went to Rhode Island College and majored in film studies. Um, and then about a year after I graduated, I landed this cushy job and now I book people on podcasts. All right. Well, just a little background. Alex is kind of my, uh, if, if, there, if we have such a thing, she's my account rep for uh, interview connections and has has uh, fed rising tide startups with some great guests and and it's just been a pleasure working with Alex and I just wanted to uh, instead of just talking to her through email I wanted to give her a chance just to kind of share who she was and let let the podcast audience see her and and uh, just talk a little bit about just the whole idea behind you know booking podcast cast guests and things like that and and maybe how it could could benefit some of our listeners so Give us a kind of a brief background. So we're getting on an elevator. You and I, we're, we're going up about 10 floors. You got about a minute. Tell me what you do and what, what does Interview Connections do? All right, I can answer this question very easily because I do this all the time because sure nobody, <laughs> nobody in my family understands what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so in a nutshell, most of our clients are guest experts who want to be guests on podcasts, and then a small handful of our clients are hosts who need guests for their podcasts. So what we do is, if you're a guest expert, we find shows for you, that would be a great fit, and then we connect you with the host. Um, if you're a host, we find guests that would be a good fit, and we connect you with a guest. Um, but in the greater scope of it, we do actually do a lot more than that. There's a whole discovery process before we actually start pitching you. Um, we strategize with clients for about a month or so um, and get to know them and their target market and what they need to see in ROI um, just before we start actually pitching them. So it's it's a pretty interesting process. So let this and we could circle back around. But as you were talking about this, so so in the basic foundation of, of the service that's provided. So if if I have a small ROI does that affect the my rate that would be charged versus I, I want a larger ROI is it kind of a flat fee for everybody nope. so we charge per booking um, a lot of our clients used to be on monthly retainer some of them still are uh -huh. but we also have been transitioning more towards like bulk packages so right. a new client that signs up might buy you know 15 bookings in bulk and then we distribute those out over the course of several months so is this something, I mean, who would be like the ideal client um, that would contact you or you would contact them to have you book them on podcasts? Does it, they have to have a certain level of revenue? Is it, I mean, what, what's kind of the avatar of the ideal client? So most of our clients are business owners or business coaches. Uh -huh. And what they are going on podcasts for is to get clients, to build their brand, um, to promote a book possibly that's coming out. Um, so I would say that the avatar would probably be a business owner who has a specific goal in mind and they want to see, you know, ROI from doing podcast interviews. Now, do you see a lot of people that have like written books that, that want to use this as a book promo tour a little bit? Yeah. Or what's some other examples? A lot of our clients um, are self-published self authors, mm -hmm. um, and podcasting is huge for them in promoting their book, and a lot of our clients, you know, one of our clients had taken a break and then came back because they have a book to promote, so they want to start doing, like, their book tour, you know, their podcasting book tour, mm -hmm. which I recommend doing, like, six months before the book comes out because people think, oh, my book's coming out next month, I'm going to start going on podcasts now, but it's like by the time the actual, actual interview goes live, it's gonna your books already gonna have been out so right. you want to promoting it beforehand right that's good so okay I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit here so but okay. as as someone that that is the beneficiary of uh, being able to you contacted me to book podcast guests so after the after the guest appears on the show is there a follow-up is there a review is there I mean how do you how do you know if the podcast that you're booking these guests with um, if the interview goes well or 
Well, a lot of times our clients, if they have a really great experience, that's when they reach out to us when they have a really great experience or a really bad experience. Yeah, it's either so, end. There you go. Yeah, if it's kind of like in the middle, we don't really hear about it. Uh-huh. Um, but if a, if an interview goes really well for a client, we'll hear about it immediately. And they'll email us and they'll be like, thank you so much. That was an awesome interview. Um, they'll tell us like if anything came from it. Um, one of our clients before the interview went live, she just became really good friends with the host Mm -hmm. and the host ended up signing up and is now her client. So like stuff like that is really awesome when that happens. Um, And then a couple days ago, a brand new client had her first interview and she emailed us and she said she had a great time. It was an awesome interview. Um, And then once in a while, not a lot, um, somebody will get in contact with us and say that um, somebody was unprofessional, a host or, you know, they, just were late and they blew them off or like the interview didn't go well and they feel like they weren't asked the proper questions mm-hmm. and then that's when we make a note of it on our side. The two things that come to mind as the kind of the podcast host, I would yeah. love it if if the guest service heard that and that feedback came back to the host. Yeah. Um, or, but you, you just it kind of, it kind of cut out there just for a second, but so you said that if you, if you book people on podcasts and it doesn't go well, you just wouldn't book them on that podcast again. Yeah, we make a note of that. We have a database where you know we put notes about hosts and about different shows. Um, so if if a client has a really bad experience on a show, we'll make a note to not pitch them again in the future. Right. So how do you find podcasts? Well, <laughs> the internet is a very big place. It is a big place. So there are a lot, Yeah, there are a lot of different ways. Um, when I first started, it was mostly on iTunes and Google uh-huh. um, that I would find shows, but there's this awesome website called Listen Notes, and it's a huge database for podcasts, and it's mm-hmm. great because it provides host emails. Um, you can search by keyword, you can search by title, you can search, um, you can organize it by date, so like the most recent, the most recently updated show will be at the top, which is mm-hmm. great for us, because we don't like to contact shows that haven't posted a show in about like six weeks, sure. because we want them to be consistent, right. and we want them to be constantly putting out content so um, we try to stay within that like six week time frame so like being able to organize by date is awesome mm-hmm. uh, it's a really cool website that I recommend if you are in this field so as a as a podcaster do you I mean when you're booking a client do you look at the podcast I mean do you have analytics on the podcast how do you know how many downloads they have I mean it could be one download that is their mother that yeah. downloads it versus a hundred thousand I mean how do you yeah, know yeah, yeah. so downloads and subscriber numbers aren't public information and we have to tell clients this a lot because they don't really understand they're like you know get me on a show that has 20,000 subscribers or something like that yeah. and we have to tell them you know it's not public information sometimes you can ask a host if mm-hmm. they'll give you their numbers but I feel like that's rude um, so what we do to gauge audience size is we go by iTunes ratings, we go by social media following, so if they have a lot of Twitter followers or Facebook followers, um, we gauge it that way. And that's basically what we have to go off of is just, you know, like social media numbers and iTunes ratings. Uh And um, also just like reviews and just like reading how many people talk about the show and what kind of following they have um, that way. But yeah, stats like that aren't public information, so. We have to try to use sneaky little ways to gauge the audience size. So I, I'm curious, how did you find Rising Tide Startups? Uh, I think I think I found you on iTunes. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure. If it wasn't iTunes, it was Listen Notes. But I think I remember finding you on iTunes um, when I was pitching my client Chris Parker because he wanted to go on shows um, – to talk about, he founded a website called whatsmyipaddress.com. Right. Um, he's a great so, guest, by the way. Yeah, he's an awesome guy. I love talking to him. Um, so, yeah, he wanted to go on shows geared towards startups, and your audience looked like it would be a perfect fit for him, and it ended up working out. Well, it, it has been a good fit because uh, we've gotten some good response from our audience, our listeners that, that yeah. talk about that episode. So, yeah, it was, it was really good. I uh, matter of fact, all the guests that you sent us have been have been a good fit. I mean, I, I appreciate you doing kind of the legwork and you not sending people that are you know completely out of our genre or, or out of yeah, our you know I'm so glad sweet I found spot. So I'm so glad I found you because so many of our clients are a great fit for your show, and you've been so receptive, and it's been awesome. 
Well, you know what? When you, when it benefits both of us, it's a it's a it's a it's a marriage made in heaven. So it's yeah. a, that's a good fit. So Definitely. what um, if you're if you're pitching our audience on on the service? And so tell me, give me some more benefits of using a service like yours and maybe some of the downsides of trying to do it on our own. Yeah, so we are professionals at this. Uh, we have an I will concur. Team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We have an in-house team. Um, you could, I mean, you could hire some VA off Upwork, but they're not going to do as good of a job as we do, obviously, because this is all that we do. Mm -hmm. um, so we are super. How do I phrase it? Um, you're professional. Yeah. And so, you're thorough. And yeah, we are very thorough. We have a whole process. Um, I could just like explain our discovery process quickly. So. We don't just, you know, get a client to sign up and then, you know, read their bio on their on their website and say, okay, we're going to make you a show list and pitch you. We have an intake call with you. We have a strategy call with you. We do the first show approval call with you. So we go over the list of the shows that we pick for you the first time and on the phone with you, we get your feedback immediately and mm -hmm. get to learn what you like, what you don't like. Um, and we're just very communicative because we're real people you know we we exist and we're in this office and we're here to help you and get you on podcasts and try to get you as great of an roi as possible you mean you're not a messenger bot that's just in, the, in yeah. facebook that just responds with the yeah, auto responders exactly. and 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 our competitors don't have in-house teams they're all you know contractors and VAs and stuff like that right. so it's really cool that we're all in this office and we're all working together and we're all trying to reach the same goal so how many people work in your office? So I have to count now because we just got two new people. So there's one, two, three, there's seven booking agents and Margie and Jess, and then wow. our, our office dog. Seven booking agents. Yep. So, so what have you said? I'm sorry, go ahead and finish what you're saying. Then yeah, I'll ask the question. Yeah, I'm just gonna say that we're broken up into two teams. So Nathan and Clara and Serena are one team and Zach, Rose, Mariana and I are another team. Um, so we have client distribution uh, sorted out between us, but we also, you know, if another team needs some assistance, I'll go help them. Mm -hmm. um, so we really do work as a collective whole. How long have you worked there? I've been here nine months. Okay. Nine and a half months, actually. Nine and a half months. So, mm -hmm. so I was going to ask you, so is the, are your teams broken up by industry or by interest no. or how, how, how do you divide the teams? Um, so when I first started working here, we weren't on teams. We were all kind of like individual and we had our own, you know, client list. Um, but we figured it would be more effective to collaborate and work together. And it really has been more mm -hmm. effective. Um, so yeah, we don't take, we're not broken up by like industry or field or anything like that. Um, we just kind of, I do the new client intake. So when somebody signs up, I assign them to a team. Mm -hmm. um, and usually that's mostly just based on numbers because um, we want to each have the same amount of bookings, you know, evenly distributed between us. So so are you, do you mainly work on the kind of the inbound side versus the outbound side? Is there, are there people that are actually out there, you know, contacting, you know, life coaches and business coaches and, and saying, hey, this is what you could pro we could provide you this as a service or are you is it more responsive you know inbound so, when they contact you a lot of people um just find us on a google search because if you search like podcast booking agency we're like one of the first things that come up uh -huh. so a lot of people find us that way and then they fill out an application online um and then they have a phone call with jess and then Jess will, you know, determine if this is a good fit for them, if this is a good strategy that they should take on. Mm -hmm. And then from there, they can choose uh, what package they'd like and whether or not they want to sign up. Hmm. So we, oh, go ahead. We've also we've also um, just recently started doing LinkedIn ads, yep. which has been amazing. Um, and a lot of it is just word of mouth. Like we have a lot of referrals. We have one client who ref has referred so many people to us that have signed up is incredible. So what's the kind of the breadth of your client base? I mean, so um, I'm not, I don't, I don't want names or anything, but I mean, you're saying, okay, this is somebody that literally is just barely getting started uh, versus somebody that's been in the business for, you know, 20 years is, is making seven figures and. Yeah. 
Um, we have, we do have clients who have never been on podcast before, who don't know anything about podcasting, who just have been told that this would be a good strategy and they're ready to take the plunge and start doing it. Um, they're not all necessarily like newbies, um, because this is a high tier service, so they need to be able to afford it. Right. Um, so m most of these people are not just starting out. Yeah. Um, but like, I do have a couple clients who have been on so many shows already that it's insane. Um, and then they come to us because they want us to, you know, take it a little bit further, but they've been on so many shows. They're not new to podcasting at all. Mm -hmm. They have their own shows, multiple shows sometimes. Right. And they are mind blowingly successful people. Um, and then there are some people who just want to try out a new marketing strategy and want to promote their business and build their brand and, they give it a go without knowing anything about podcasting really they let us help them learn about it so how do you prepare a guest that has never been on a podcast how do you prepare them kind of for their first interview or is that is that part of the discovery process or part of the prep process before they they get rolling or is that up no, to the host it's not exclusively part of the process what we do though during the strategy call so we try to make a list of questions that for their one sheet that a host could ask them uh -huh. so what we can do if they're brand new to podcasting and they want some help is we can ask them the questions on their one sheet that the host is going to be asking them um, so they can try to prepare and get into the right mindset and know you know what they should be saying so do, do most hosts provide the questions beforehand or is it more interactive off the cuff during the interview or both so to my knowledge, I'm I'm only CC'd on the connection emails once in a while. Mm -hmm. Usually after the connection, they take me off the email thread and they just the host and the guest expert work it out amongst themselves. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we scheduling is something that we don't typically do for clients, but we can we do provide that as a yep. service. Um, so once in a while, I'll see in an email, you know, can you send me some questions over? Or if I'm on if I'm booking a guest on a show account that we have. Um, a lot of times the guests will ask if the host can provide some questions. Um, but I don't think typically it's it's done. I think usually you just show up and and they ask you the questions. But if you're a guest expert, they mostly will be asking you questions off of your one sheet and then throwing in anything else that they want to know. Yeah. And that's, that's interesting because, um, you know, they – and I want you to unpack this in just a second, but – I know the guests that you send me have a kind of a one sheet bio and mm -hmm. it not only has their bio and, and a, a nice, you know, high res picture on it, but it also has some questions that um, they maybe they would like to be asked mm -hmm. in the course of the interview. And um, I'm one of those that actually sends questions ahead of time. So oh, I mean, cool. we have a, you know, a list of eight to 10 questions or whatever. And I, and, but I do say, Hey, in big, bold letters at the top, I said, I have a caveat that I will chase rabbits if, if you say something interesting or we yeah. want to follow up on something. So, you know, I want you to be, be prepared to know that these are your questions are going to be asked, mm -hmm. but please don't write them out and read them. You know, we want, we want it to be a natural yeah. engaging dialogue conversation, but uh, I do want you to, and instead of asking a question, then, you know, there's like deer in the headlights are going, mm -hmm. uh, I, I didn't know you're going to ask that. I don't, I don't know what that, yeah. I don't have an answer for that, you know? So let me hit the pause button and we'll go back and try that one again. So, but it's uh, it's good to, to have that information. You guys are, are really good at providing that. So how do you I mean, how did you determine that that you needed the one page and, and what's really the specific purpose for that kind of one page summary? So the one sheet is serving a really great purpose, in my opinion, because it's so it's just right there and it's condensed and it's everything you need to know right in front of you. It's easy to read. And it's really helpful for the host to have those questions and to have those topics. Mm -hmm. They can just, because people get so many emails yep, and yep. I feel like sometimes people, you know, hosts especially, they get so many pitches, I'm sure. And the last thing they want to do is read another pitch. I mean, I'm not going to knock down my pitches because they're awesome and we customize all of our pitches. So we don't, you know, copy paste. Right. Uh, we don't send out a template, which is another thing that sets us aside from our competitors. Mm -hmm. uh, so we write every pitch to the host for that show specifically. Um, so, but I do know I am aware that a lot of hosts don't want to read pitches, and so they'll just skim through the email really quick. They'll see there's a one sheet. They'll just look at the one sheet. Mm -hmm. So, 
we kind of joke around that we think hosts either read the pitch and don't look at the one sheet or just look at the one sheet and don't read the pitch. Um, so it's just so simple and, and easy to read. And it also, we like to brand the one sheets to the client. So like yeah. if you look at it, you'll get their color scheme, you'll get what they're all about, um, and you'll get to see their beautiful face. But is it a standard template that you use? You just change the colors and the font and the picture? No, nope, not a standard template. We have a design team, uh, a remote design team. They're not in-house. Uh -huh. They are in Arizona. Um, and what we do is we write the one sheet copy after the strategy call, and then we send them the copy and they put it together. They pretty much just come up with the template, the layout, like the design template on their own. Mm -hmm. And they send it back and then we send it to the client and they'll either okay or say, oh, I want this changed or I want that changed. And then once you know everybody can agree on a design and um, it's all set and good to go and we can send it out. So I'm gonna ask you another question kind of off the cuff here. So do you listen to podcasts? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I have a but podcast. But you're gonna start now. <laughs> I have a podcast, I produce three of them, I work here, uh -huh. but I don't listen to podcasts. That's probably one that you, after you, after you get off the clock, you probably want to just turn that off, so. Well, it's, it's not that, it's not like a, it's not like a, I don't want to mix work and pleasure kind of thing, because uh -huh. I love my job, and I don't see how that would, like, listening to podcasts would, would sell in that, but I just don't, I don't have the attention span to, like, sit there and listen to people talk. I, I'm a music person, so uh -huh. I just have music on constantly, and yeah, I don't listen to podcasts. <laughs> I'm a fraud, I know. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. You, you, it's right. If I, if I work for a, uh, you know, say a diabetes medicine company and I didn't need it, I wouldn't use it. <laughs> yeah. So it's that simple. It's that yeah. simple. I so. listen when, um, like if Jess and Marg are on a show, I'll listen to that. Um, somebody just had them on like last month, and I listened to that. Um, so if it's somebody that I know is, is being a guest on a show, I'll listen, but generally I don't subscribe to any podcasts. I don't listen to, I don't listen to them regularly mm -hmm. at all. So before you would, would book someone on a show, would you listen to a sample of their, of their work? Yeah. Yep. So I don't listen to them regularly, but I do listen to them for work. Uh -huh. Um, not generally a whole entire episode, but sure. I do need to get a feel for the show yeah. before. I pitch it to make sure it's great for the client. I was, uh, I, I don't want to disparage one of my fellow podcasters out there, but I was, I was just going through iTunes and just listening to other startup podcasts and just yeah. kind of click on an episode and just listening to how they do things because I want to be a lifetime time learner and, and I can learn from so many people on how to do this better. And mm -hmm. um, this poor, poor guy was just literally reading the question and the person would answer it and he would just go to the next question and it was, it was just so kind of wooden mm -hmm. and I mean it was like and the person wouldn't really even be finished with the answer and then he's reading the next question and then okay number four um, and I'm thinking you know this this he's been doing this for quite a while yeah and it was it was just it was pretty difficult actually to listen to because it was just yeah. so um, I guess regimented, or I don't, I don't know the right word for it. I mean, I, other than wooden, I can't, I can't think the, of a descriptor. But I just like the the more conversational style, and you know, the interaction and give and take, and and mm -hmm. being able to to you know take a diversion if, if there's something that's that's interesting that's said that we need to follow up on. I think the listeners would would uh, you know really re react well to and. So have you seen some trends like, tell me where podcasting, where you think podcasting is headed in the next, you know, three to five years? And do people ask those questions when they're, when they're looking at the service? Um, I don't generally get that question now, so I don't really have an answer off the top of my head. Um, I think it's growing, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's an industry that I had no idea how big it was before I started working here, mm -hmm. but it's huge and people love it and it's, it spans so many different generations. I mean, most for the most part, millennials, I think, listen to podcasts, but there are podcasts like, you know, my parents would listen to, and sure. it's everybody, there's something for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, you know, the more people that listen, there's a more of a demand, and the right, more people I agree. get into it are like, hey, I can do this, because they let anybody on the internet. So I think it's just gonna keep growing. Yeah. I, I think I think you're exactly right. I think that uh, it's almost like radio on demand. Mm 
Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't cost anything to download. You can download it to your phone. You can listen to it whenever you're, you know, on a commute. I mean, that's really how I got started, you know, like two or three years ago was just on the on the daily commute. I just wanted something to listen to other yep. than sports talk radio, which I normally listen to. And, it, you know, just started listening. And then it was almost like addictive. I mean, there was a, it was habitual. And so yeah. I started downloading, you know, dozens of podcasts, you know, in different uh, but primarily in the in the business space because it was just so interesting to hear, you know, startup stories, and that's actually why I'm doing this today. Yeah. Is because the 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 podcasts were so good to listen to, and it was almost like, I, well, I've consumed about all the content out there that I can. I'm yeah. listening to them faster than than they can create them. So mm-hmm. well, let's just do it on my own. So. Yeah, the one time I actually did listen to podcasts before I started working here, I used to film high school sporting events, so I would have to travel, you know, sometimes like two and a half hour commute mm-hmm. to film a game, and that is when I would put something on during a commute because that's when I can just like sit and chill and listen and like yeah. absorb the information. But I don't have I don't have that time anymore. So, wow. well, Alex, is there anything else that we haven't talked about that you think would be uh, beneficial to our, our listening audience as, as they're you know creating their startups and their their side hustles or um, just maybe just in the podcast space or just in general? Try out podcasting. It is awesome marketing, and I like I said earlier, I think it's just going to keep growing in popularity, and it's only going to help you build your business more. So if you are looking to get some clients or sell some books or just build your brand and get your name out there, podcasting could be for you. So head over to interviewconnections.com and fill out an application. That the, you answered my next question. My next one is how did they find you online is interviewconnections.com. Yeah. Yep, or interviewconnections.com. You can fill out an application and then Margie will be in touch with you and you can set up a call with Jess. We are all over social media, mostly Instagram, at Interview Connections. Jess is constantly blowing up the Instagram story, (laughs) so there's always something to watch. Um, And we have a lot of cute pictures of our office dog, Carden. I've seen him. I subscribe to your Instagram (laughs) channel. (laughs) I see those frequently. Well, Alex, thanks again for just coming on the show today. And and, uh, once again, I just publicly want to just say thank you to you for, for you and Interview Connections for just uh, helping all boats rise in a rising tide. Have a great day. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks.